I regret to inform you that the world's elites are at it again. They're using the developing world as a testing ground for their bad green ideas. This time, the UK government is experimenting on African children by feeding them a bug-based diet. I saw this article in LifeSite News and it absolutely turned my stomach, not just because of the content of the experiment the article addressed, but the absolute inhumane way that Western elites treat children in the developing world. It's a common theme with these people, though, especially with all of their green agenda ideas. They use the developing world as guinea pigs for their experiments and it makes sense because the green agenda grows out of a mentality that there are just too many people on the face of the earth these elites of course don't mean that there are too many humans like themselves they mean you know those people over there with all the kids and their families and their traditional social structures and traditional diets there's too many of those people they're disposable plus they're way over there on the african continent so we don't have to look at all their suffering we're imposing on them anyway here's the thing that i found in life site that was so appalling poor african kids are the subject of an experiment to determine whether regular bug consumption can improve their nutrition without consideration of potential inflammatory effects from insects the uk government is funding an experiment to assess the effects of eating insect based porridge foods on the nutritional status of children in Zimbabwe, a practice being pushed by environmentalists as a sustainable diet choice. The United Kingdom Research and Innovation Backed Project is feeding poor elementary school children mopane worms and soldier termite flour on a daily basis for a year. The study will examine the effects of the insect supplementation on the children's height, weight and micronutrient status as well as their cognitive function as determined by their school performance the project summary notes that this is all fine and dandy because insect foods are culturally acceptable in the african region and they've been used by some zimbabwean rural communities out of extreme necessity to avoid malnutrition during drought and poor harvest now all of this completely disregards the very real potential for problems from eating bugs. I've previously reported on that here at Rebel News about a study published in 2019 that found parasites in 81% of insect farms that were examined and in 30% of those cases, the parasites were, quote, potentially pathogenic for humans. That study called bug farms an underestimated reservoir of human and animal parasites. So these mad scientists from the UK could be funding a study that evidence has previously shown could actually make these kids sick with a parasite. And these kids are already potentially malnourished. That's why they're in the study. But why are we feeding these children bugs at all when we can give them chickens, which will eat the bugs? It's the same reason that we eat beef because we can't eat grass. We eat animals who eat the things that we can't to get the nutrients that we need from them. A study of malnourished children in Thailand from rural areas found that eating just three eggs per week can correct the problem of protein malnutrition among primary school aged students. Another study done on children in Africa, in Uganda actually, found that just one to two eggs per day resulted in a significant increase in height and weight gain and muscle growth. And those are just the physical attributes of eating an egg, besides the benefit of B12 on the developing brain. But I'm not sure the world elites want the people in Africa to be strong, healthy, and thoughtful. I think they want to use them as human meat sacks, impoverished, unthinking, weak robots and crash test dummies for their crazy theories. For example, the elites expected Sri Lanka to go completely organic with their fertilizer use to meet climate change targets. And you know what happened next? Crop failures, food insecurity, and then government toppling riots. But the people who came up with these crazy ideas, the rich global elites at the World Economic Forum and at the United Nations, you know, their troughs are always full and their snouts are always in those troughs, aren't they? And don't get me started on the insufferable 
disgusting working conditions, if you can call slave labor a working condition, that children in the Congo have to survive to produce rare earth minerals so that Western elite fancy people can have electric cars. African nations are constantly disincentivized from developing their own natural gas resources, while 3.8 million people die prematurely each year on the African continent due to the effects of indoor air pollution because 2.6 billion people in poor countries still burn wood, coal, charcoal, or animal dung indoors for cooking. These people get to cook their food over a turd, while some well-kept Norwegian or Canadian or Brit pats themselves on the back while reaping the benefits of fossil fuels for themselves. Africans, poor people, are just collateral damage in the first world's quest for a carbon-neutral future. And if a few kids die of cricket parasites along the way, well, that's just the price of going green. No thanks. No thanks. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you're like me, if you won't malnourish yourself to meet the climate targets of some prime rib eating world elite, please consider signing our petition at IWon'tEatBugs.com.